I have been developing games as a hobby for over six years. And in that time, I have made some good projects and a whole lot of bad ones. And as it's the beginning of a new year, I thought I would sit down and look back on every project I made in 2023 to see how I've improved as a developer, what skills each project taught me, and if anything in particular caused me to drop the development and move on. So let's get started. At the beginning of the year, I was still deep into the development of the Command Donuts, which is still to this day my most ambitious project. I have a collection of devlogs on my channel. If you want to check them out, I'll leave a playlist in the top corner. But for the short version, it is slash was a top-down twin-stick shooter RPG, where the player takes control of a donut in their fight against the fruit invaders. As it stands, the project has a good level of content. For this, I created a complex weapon controller that I still use in future projects, a fairly decent AI, a really nice infinite map system, it's a great challenge to make, and many more assets that I can apply to future projects. This is always what I aim to achieve with a game, even if I don't finish it, I still have something that can be used later down the line. I think the main reason I moved on from this project was that I just wasn't ready or able to take on a challenge this big. It was just too much of a time sink that I just couldn't commit to, which is a shame, but it happens. After this, I set myself a challenge to make a game in 7 days, and that challenge turned into Warehouse, a simple resource management game where zombies randomly attack your little survivors. This challenge was great fun, as it pushed me to do things that looked chaos-like. In the end, the game was full of spaghetti code, a lack of direction, weird game design, and overall a complete lack of polish. But it was really an amazing project to make, and if you're into game development, I would highly recommend taking part in a challenge like this, just for yourself or as part of a game jam. And speaking of game jams, my next project was a game jam title that I created with a few friends of mine. This untitled game was one of the most enjoyable projects I've worked on, and it really showed why game jams can be just so fun. The theme was growth, and so we took the economy approach and created a giraffe running a supermarket. For it, I wrote all the code, but my friends made the music and models, which was quite daunting for me, but pushed me to learn things very quickly. I experimented with the use of a nav mesh, something I had never touched before, and made a generic interaction system for the player and customers to make everything scalable and easy. It definitely wasn't without its flaws, but looking back, it was a really great time making something to be proud of. In May, I started the development of a game called Chunk Grinder, a voxel-themed dwarf colony sim. This was one of my favourite solo projects this year, even though I barely made any gameplay features before moving on. Firstly, because the content I made around this project was really well received and was a blast to share with you, but also what already exists in the game is rather nicely designed and would be quite easy to pick up and add to at a later date, because I actually took the time to plan every detail. This is usually a pretty big issue for me with games. I start without really planning anything. I just hope that I end up somewhere good. It was really fun to learn a new style of art for this project with the use of magic of voxel, as well as exploring colour swapping shaders, which allow me to create quite a nice and simple art style with a lot of control on what it looked like. Overall, an amazing project to work with, it just came at the wrong time for me personally. A couple of months later, I started to look at using Chunk Grinder as a base for a new type of game, a more simple resource gathering game, and that is where Auto Dwarves came in. The idea was, you would have dwarves in the mines digging for resources. With these resources, you hired more dwarves to dig down to gain more resources, very simple loop. The surface would then have a variety of buildings that you could spend resources on to improve your dwarves, the mine speed, your max capacity of dwarves, and so on. Again, due to personal reasons, I never really had the time to put in the effort to achieve this, so it's just another half-baked idea that never came to be, but it was still experience for future projects. Around August time came the basic prototype for Peasant's Rule. This was a project that I was working on for a little while and was supposed to make a video about, but it just never happened. In this game, you play as a king that can't really do anything. To stop the goblins from killing you, you go around hiring peasants to attack them for you. The game was based off of Vampire Survivors and Brotato, those auto-attacking style survival games, but it was planned to have a bit more structure in the levels. In its current state, the peasant and the enemy AI is quite good, with only a few issues. Like the peasant's ranged weapons didn't seem to aim very well and would miss most of the shots, but the core concept was there, and you can see where I was going with it. Weirdly enough, one of my favourite parts of this project was making this brick wall texture. Don't know what it is about it, but I think it just looks really nice, and it was a good lesson in learning perspective and colour choices for pixel art. Hi, how are you? September was a pretty good month for me, 
with my video based on my first Godot project blowing up way more than I expected. Around that time, Unity was looking in real bad shape, the CEO was making some questionable decisions, and it seemed like they wouldn't really recover, with a lot of developers jumping ships to other engines such as Godot. And it was in this first project I made a basic tower defense game using our assets from Peasants Rule. This was an interesting experiment for me and it was the first time I'd ever touched Godot and while it didn't really grab me enough to keep me there, it was still a good experience. The tower defense game was nothing special at all, with a single tower type fighting against a single enemy. There wasn't a whole lot about it, but people enjoyed the process, so it was definitely a success. <coughs> Carrying on from this experiment, I tried to recreate two iconic Flash games in Godot. The first one was a very basic helicopter clone. Not really a whole lot to say about it. You just travel down a pathway, avoiding obstacles, and when you crash into the walls, the game ends. Very, very basic. It was the second project that was a bit more complex and a lot more painful to achieve. Don't know what it was about Godot, but I almost bailed on this project every time I worked on it, because I just wasn't enjoying making this at all. In the end, I did manage to produce something that vaguely resembles the style of game I wanted to make, though it had a lot of errors and I definitely cut corners wherever I could. I'm glad I tried Godot, but I'm also just happy I'm not using it anymore, and instead can use an engine I'm more familiar with. Which was absolutely not the case with the last project of the year, as that was my Storm the House remake in Unreal Engine. This was definitely a daunting task, as my experience in Unreal was very lacking. However, unlike Godot, I had made a project in Unreal before. It's just that it was six years ago at uni and I don't remember a thing. I was very happy with how this project ended up. It looked quite nice. It was my first time using 3D assets and animations, and it was nice to learn about Unreal's visual scripting blueprints. But again, it wasn't something I planned to stick to. If you want to see the full process of this development or any other project I've listed in the video, I have devlogs on my channel which will all be linked in the info tab uh, in the description and I'll also create a 2023 playlist for all my projects I've made. It's been a good year for me with game dev. I'm really enjoying making these videos and I'm glad I can entertain and inform people with them. And so, what's next for 2024? The next game I plan to create is a round based survival game, heavily inspired by Call of Duty Zombies. I'm currently prototyping something and I've been talking to some friends of mine, an artist and a musician, to actually make this project a reality. She should be seeing a devlog or update video around the start of February, so make sure you've subscribed so you don't miss that, leave a like down below and let me know which of the games I've made this year are your favourites and I will see you in the next one. Cheers!